Hey, sorry I've been away for a while. I was on tour for a couple of months, but I'm back and ready to go. So, anything big happen while I was gone? Today's movie is a special request from Patreon supporter Kieran Kyle, who asked me to review the 1981 slasher movie Bloody Moon. And this movie's special for another reason, because it's the very first Jess Franco movie I've ever featured on this show. Don't know who Jess Franco is? Jesus Franco, affectionately known as Uncle Jess, was a Spanish exploitation movie director who made 200 movies between 1959 and his death in 2013. He was so prolific, he directed a dozen movies just in 1973. In fact, in just the time you've been watching this video, he could have made a lesbian vampire flick, two women in prison flicks, and a Christopher Lee Fu Manchu movie. Speaking of which, Jess's most popular movie is arguably Castle of Fu Manchu, mainly because it was featured on an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I suddenly have to go to the bathroom. Really? really? Yeah. Why? Funniest, I wonder. funniest thing. Well, I've been itching to riff a Jess Franco movie for a long time now, and this seems as good a place as any to start. So here is Bloody Moon. Oh, sorry, looks like I put in Twitch of the Death Nerve by mistake. Unless Bloody Moon is just another one of that movie's alternate titles. And hey, that moon's not bloody. That's false advertising. Maybe the bloody part of the title is referring to this guy's eczema. This movie's off to a weird start, but there is one thing that can save it. Disco. <laughs> Yeah, I've always said slasher movies would be a lot better if they switched soundtracks with Legend of the Dinosaurs. In fact, what do you say we put that to the test? See? What'd I tell you? Eczema boy from earlier goes to the party, but he's a little upset that he's the only one not hooking up. I'd like to make love with you. So would I. Wait, so you want to fuck yourself? Scabface steals this guy's Mickey Mouse mask, because slasher movies are always better when they come with copyright infringement. He also meets a girl who I guess must be a big Disney fan, since she immediately goes home with him. Oh, -ho, Mickey's about to get his dick wet! Oh, -ho. But uh-oh, Butterface. And is she upset because he's ugly, or because she actually thought she was about to sleep with Mickey Mouse? Mm, yeah, that was also Walt's reaction whenever hookers took off his Mickey Mouse during sex. And I guess Bloody Moon isn't the title after all, although I think telling Ben at the Sage to die is a little extreme. The movie then cuts to five years later, where the murderer from the beginning, Miguel, is being released from the insane asylum to be taken care of by his sister, Manuela. You must be aware of the great responsibility you assume. And we can't guarantee that your brother is totally cured, and therefore you must always keep your eyes open. So Miguel only got five years for brutally murdering that girl, and you're releasing him despite the fact that you're not sure if he's cured and will kill again. Yeah, uh, could I take a closer look at that PhD, please? That's also Jess Franco himself cameoing as the doctor, although I think that was probably only to save time by not looking for another actor. Five years may have passed since the murder, but Disco's still alive and well in Miguel's mind. But something tells me he's still not quite right. What is it, Miguel? Come on. Why do you look at her like that? Because he's a psycho creep. Just a hunch. Plus, I think his vision might be faulty. Oh, Miguel! You didn't kill her, did you? Why do you keep on gaping at me like that? What am I, Frankenstein's daughter? No, but apparently you're the invisible woman. How the hell did they not see her sitting there? This is the movie's main character, Angela, who's on her way to a language school being run by Steve Gutenberg Art Garfunkel here. How many students do we have? Forty since yesterday. Not that ought to do it. Oh, it was just an impossible idea trying to open a language school over here. Yeah, especially when the opening credits and the dubbing can't agree on what language you're speaking. And I'm not sure about some of the people working here. Paco, have you seen Manuela and Miguel? Hmm, either he hasn't seen them, or he's trying really hard to hold in a fart. 
Okay, if you're wondering what the plot is, the language school is on an estate owned by Miguel and Manuela's aunt, who's decided to leave everything to Miguel in her will. And if you know anything about European horror movies, you know inheritance disputes usually lead to a whole lot of killing. You're always trying to butt in on everything, but just remember I'm not dead yet. Well, it is still early in the movie. And the moon still isn't bloody. Let's see, POV shot, 80s horror movie. I'm sure this is gonna end well. Actually, what's really weird about this scene is the soundtrack. Oh, someone help, please! <laughs> what the hell? Did the killer bring a saw with him? What's with the music? Oh, never mind. I guess it was a torch making that sound. Hey, don't be upset. You made it past the 10 minute mark. That's better than a lot of old ladies in wheelchairs do in these types of movies. Las manzanas de la señora Ortega. Son las manzanas de la señora Ortega. Ladies, please, you can read passages from the Necronomicon later. There's been a murder. Not only do headphones in Europe come with cute little kitten ears, but their language schools also come with tennis lessons. I don't know about this. The last movie I saw with a tennis match came with tits. Oh, never mind. There they are. But wait, didn't someone get murdered here? That's not all. A girl in the very same bungalow was murdered brutally in her bed. Honestly, how gruesome. That's a bit far-fetched. Trust me, it's probably the least ridiculous death in this movie. It may seem like Miguel's spying on Angela here, but he's really just jealous of her sweet Grace Jones sweater. Hmm, sounds like somebody else is inside the house, but it's nothing a little music can't drown out. And here's a tip, if you know there's a creepy guy hanging around your house, don't let him back in again! Souvenir, souvenir. Oh, my mistake, it was just this 1930s paper boy. Actually, if there's one thing Angela needs to watch out for, it's all the fake scares around here. Hey, what are you doing, Angela? My god, Inga, you scared me. Why's that? You know perfectly well I was coming to get you. Oh, sorry, guess I'm a little on edge since some weirdo broke into my house and spied on me in the bathroom, but I'm sure it's nothing. Maybe the reason Angela's not more creeped out by Miguel is because everyone at this school seems kind of off. Hi! What would you say if we decided to let you have a go hello? here? I'd say that's a weird way to say hello. Actually, everything about this situation is weird. That's not all. As a lover, he's fantastic. Antonio, am I wrong or right? If you really want to see, try me out one night. Oh, and don't worry about these two. They love it when I offer to fuck other girls right in front of them. It's kind of their thing. But turns out Antonio isn't the only cunning linguist in town. Habla usted español, señorita? Yes, I speak fluently. Muchas gracias. Arriba España. Buenas noches. Hasta la vista es mi caro. Is that enough to convince you, senor? Not quite. You didn't call him a pendejo. And is spying on girls in their rooms the only thing Miguel does all day? I don't think he should be getting that inheritance. You. You're the only girl I've ever loved. Yeah, but not the only girl he's ever stalked. Turns out Miguel's in love with his sister, so he's like Jamie Lannister. That is, if a dragon burned half his face and then gave him a shitty haircut. Again, this is weird, but it's nothing a little music can't fix. Ah yes, the disco swing craze of early 80s Europe. That really needs to come back. Uh, assuming it ever even existed in the first place. I see Antonio still having luck with the ladies, although that's probably because he's the only guy there. Pity Antonio couldn't choose between us. I certainly wouldn't mind if he took me home. <laughs> and for what reason would he choose you, when all you do is throw him in the swimming pool and make a nuisance of yourself? <laughs> ladies, please, don't fight. I was really hoping to bang all of you. Even though Antonio can get any woman he wants, he only has eyes for Angela. At least for tonight. Uh, Angela? Thanks. Good night. Ooh, shot down. I'm kind of losing interest here, but thankfully Jess knows how to hold my attention. And god damn it, that moon still isn't bloody! You know it's a bad sign when even the movie's getting ready to go to sleep. Finally, the door gave way, and silently he slipped through. The only thing that disturbed him was the light in her bedroom. Hey, easy lady, I'm the one explaining what's going on here. No need to be afraid, turns out the killer just wanted to murder a flower. Plus, he apparently has the power to disappear. Can the characters just not see things unless the camera can, too? 
Angela's hearing must not be too good either, since she doesn't hear her friend being murdered in the next room. Uh, ah! Antonio! Antonio! Angela, what's happening? Ava, she's dead. Ava's been murdered. Are you sure it's not your imagination? She, she's probably only passed out. Yeah, a lot of people pass out with knives in their chest. Ah, here's the guilty party. A murder story. The killer came at midnight. That's weird. I don't think I've heard of that Jess Franco movie. And damn it, Angela, start locking your door at night so people can't just randomly wander in. Now I know why you decided to leave the club in such a hurry, because you couldn't wait to be rid of us and to be alone with Antonio. Well, do you see anything wrong in that? Okay, I get it. Antonio's supposed to be a stud. Well, I see Gutenfunkel's also under the impression he's in Saturday Night Fever. Uh, Senor Alvaro, I just wanted to... What you wanted is obvious, isn't it? Now get out of Angela's room immediately. Will you beat it? Well, he's gonna have to now that you cock-blocked him like that. I'm not sure about this language school. Not only do their lessons seem to consist of listening to books on tape, but they seem to be taking a weird turn. It's gone. They are going to kill you. You're as good as dead. I will murder you. Um, okay. Can I just learn how to ask where the bathroom is? The movie really wants you to think Miguel's the killer, which of course means he isn't. Well, I mean, yeah, he is a killer. He killed that girl at the beginning. He's just not the killer. Plus, I'm pretty sure this guy's got some bodies in his crawl space. At one point, it even looks like the producers of Takeshi's Castle are trying to kill Angela. I was screaming for dramatic effect. Well, I was moved by it. Okay, you saw your friend's dead body, and she's been missing for a couple days. Now are you gonna tell the cops? Didn't you see that enormous rock that came flying down just now? It only just missed me. Senorita, you must read the signs. Oh, and your friend got murdered too? Well, didn't you read the sign? Nothing we can do about it. Angela asks Antonio about her missing friend, and I think those plants are the only things in the movie that get more trim than he does. What were you doing down by the port? Just bumming around. You're having an affair with her, aren't you? He introduced himself by offering to sleep with you in front of two other women he was with. I really don't think the word monogamy exists in this guy's vocabulary. The rest of Angela's friends don't seem too concerned about one of their group going missing, probably because it isn't the only weird thing going on at this school. What the hell? Is she getting humped by a ghost? This movie's weird, but I wasn't expecting it to get that weird. I can't believe it. She really did pick up a guy. Oh, wait, she's trying to trick her friends into thinking she's getting laid. That's a pretty good trick. Not that I would know. Although I'm not too sure about the toys Inga's using. That real doll looks a little defective. Oh! 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 How can you just look at me like that and laugh at me? You know, I feel bad for Inga. I mean, everyone knows how hard it is for an attractive young woman to get laid in Europe. But Inga eventually does hook up with a guy, or maybe several guys, since he appears to change haircuts in between shots. Inga's beau takes her for a romantic getaway, and this kid gets to practice being a peeping Tom in a later European exploitation movie. This does seem a little kinky for a first date, though. But as they say, suffering is good for pleasure. Oh, you're gonna suffer all right. So, what does this guy have planned for? I still don't know what you look like. Why don't you take off your mask? Oh, shit. This isn't funny anymore! Let me go now! Stop that thing! For God's sake, stop it! Well, I'm sure you all know where this is going. Decapitation! Oh, and great job, kid. You managed to save her for about half a second. The killer chases after him, but they're not gonna kill a kid in this movie, are they? Ah! Oh, yeah, I forgot. 80s European horror movies don't give a fuck! Meanwhile, it looks like Angela's getting chased by skinny Uncle Fester. Maybe that'll finally be enough to convince her to lock her door. You know, I will give this movie credit. It's the first one I've had on the show with a character who's simultaneously a red herring and actually a psycho killer. Angela barricades the door, but even that isn't enough to keep the cliches out. Oh, thank God. It was just my cat. Wait, since when do I own a cat? Angela's so scared she's jumping at shadows. And by that, I mean trying to murder them. How could this situation get any worse? Oh, shit. Now Edgar Winter's Frankenstein's at the door. 
Just kidding, it's her friend. The real twist is that the killer was actually a mannequin this whole time. You're unbelievable. What you saw was not a murderer, but just a dummy. Yeah, but it does look a bit like the killer from Torso, so better safe than sorry. Hmm, I suppose I could call the cops, but on second thought, fuck it. Besides, they should be okay as long as they don't say something stupid like... Be right back. Alright, so she's dead. Another great thing about Europe, all discos also double as liquor stores. Although I think their penalties for underage drinking are a little harsh. <laughs> and here we see the movie's most unique murder weapon, which is nowhere to be found on the movie's cover art. Also, what the hell was this thing supposed to be used for other than killing people? Anyway, how's Angela doing? Jesus, even the characters are waiting for this movie to be over. Well, at least now we know what it would look like if Jess Franco directed The Godfather. Okay, Angela, you know all your friends are dead, so instead of checking every single room, maybe you should get the hell out of there. Oop, oh, too late. And what's this? You mean Miguel isn't the killer of people who aren't the girl at the beginning? Miguel may not be the killer, but he is terrible at rescuing people. This is why you never go to a school where every man working there is a complete creep. Okay, looks like it's daytime now, so I guess that means she got away. Hopefully Manuela can help her. There now, don't worry. You just drink this and you feel better right away. Fun fact, this is also how Jess got through a lot of movie shoots. Just try not to think about it. You probably had a bad dream. You haven't called the police, have you, Angela? <laughs> Why? And surprise, it turns out Manuela's in cahoots with Gutenfunkel, who's the real killer. Even though Miguel is also a killer. Okay, I know I keep saying that, but seriously, how the hell did he only get five years for this? They plan to blame Miguel for the deaths by killing Angela using Miguel's knife, because who cares if this guy's fingerprints are on it? Miguel's the one with the receipt. But Miguel does not like being accused of murders that he didn't actually commit this time. If you only realized how much I despise them both, I will bitch in the wheelchair and that pathetic deformed brother of mine. Miguel's repulsive face just makes me sick. And he's your brother. Ugly or not, you still shouldn't want to fuck him. Gutenfunkel has a disagreement with Manuela, probably because she said 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover was a better song than Bright Eyes. Ah, uh, poor Miguel. All he wanted to do was fuck his sister after he murdered that girl. Wait, why do I feel sorry for him again? Manuela, let me in. You're the only sister I ever loved. Miguel makes up for not rescuing Angela earlier by... trying to kill her? <laughs> You know, even if he wasn't the main killer, Miguel was still a creep and a murderer, so this really isn't that tragic. And in another crazy twist, it turns out the Contessa was really Norman Bates's mom this whole time. No, Mother, oh, please, I won't say anything. You know, she still hasn't called the cops yet. She's probably telling the truth. And in case you thought there hasn't been enough over-the-top death scenes yet... Holy shit, there's an electric hedge clipper death in this movie? Why the hell didn't they put that on the movie's poster? Come to think of it, why didn't I put that on my title card? I saved your life, remember that. Miguel and Alvaro are both murderers, remember that. Yeah, I'm aware. Well, at least somebody managed to call the cops. Okay, so Gutenfunkel and Miguel are both dead, so is that the end? <laughs> Fuck? Okay, so I guess another twist is that Miguel's a fucking zombie? And if you think that was abrupt, check out this ending. Alright, well I guess Jess had another movie to make that afternoon and needed to wrap things up. Jess Franco directed his fair share of horror movies, but to my knowledge, Bloody Moon is the only time he went into pure slasher movie territory. Franco himself later disowned the movie, but I'm not really sure why. Sure, it's got all the familiar cliches, POV shots, fake scares, pretty young women getting murdered, but the kill scenes are actually pretty effective, and it's much faster paced than a lot of Franco's other films, which can frankly get a little pretentious and boring. 
I've mentioned how European horror movies from the early 70s were a big influence on later American slasher films, so it's kind of fun watching a European movie trying to be like an 80s American slasher movie. So there you go, my very first Jess Franco movie on this show. But given his filmography, I doubt it'll be the last. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Hey.